Welcome to Module 1. In this module, we will provide you with an overview of Moto Turbo CPS 2.0. Moto Turbo Customer Programming Software, CPS 2.0, provides a programming interface between a PC and Moto Turbo radios and repeaters. It enables you to easily program the devices using code plugs and manage their software updates. A typical software package contains platform specific software components, such as firmware, code plugs, language packs, and selling features. Licenses required. Moto Turbo CPS 2.0 is a purpose built application, focusing on the basics for provisioning needs. It provides an updated, modern interface, unified between CPS 2.0 and radio management for ease of use and your comfort. This unified approach will also make it easier to learn and manage new feature capabilities across both of our programming platforms. Additionally, it's a lightweight software suite, which allows programming flexibility in the field, especially needed in emergency programming support scenarios. Motor Turbo CPS 2.0 software application is a running change for the CPS software application used for programming Motor Turbo radios and repeaters. Compared to the legacy CPS, we have introduced multiple improvements and new features, including easier application installing. You just need an installation package and administrator rights on your computer to have the software up and running. Improved navigation for programming. All the functionalities are easily accessible with just a few clicks. Migration support from legacy CPS. CPS 2.0 allows the user to open code plugs used in legacy CPS and save them in the new file format. Migration support to radio management. The procedure to migrate from CPS 2.0 to radio management has been simplified. Clone Express. A new workflow that allows the user to build a code plug and clone it with a single button press. Recover license. A new single button procedure that allows the user to recover licenses into another instance of CPS 2.0. In Module 2, we will go through the download and installation process for Moto Turbo CPS 2.0. You can download Moto Turbo CPS 2.0 from Motorola Online, MOL. You can also install it directly from the DVD provided to you as part of the purchase. Please familiarize yourself with the system, hardware, and software installation requirements for the installation of the Moto Turbo Customer Programming Software 2.0. Before you install CPS 2.0, Make sure no devices are plugged into your computer and no other programs are running. To begin, locate and double-click the installation.exe file downloaded from MOL or MyView. If you wish to install from DVD, insert the master DVD into your DVD drive and wait for the auto-install program to start. If the program fails, navigate to the installation.exe file on the DVD and double-click it. From now on, follow the steps shown on the screen. Please note that you can have both the legacy CPS and the new CPS 2.0 installed on your computer. Not only is it possible, but it's also a good practice to keep both versions on your PC in case you need to access older archive files or operate mixed models of your radio fleet. In Module 3, we will have a look at the Moto Turbo CPS 2.0 user interface. At the point you are ready to launch CPS 2.0 for the first time, make sure you or your IT department have administration rights on the computer where CPS 2.0 will be installed. Double-click the CPS 2.0 icon on the desktop to start CPS 2.0. In this section, we'll take a look at the GUI of CPS 2.0. If you wish to learn more about a particular GUI section, please navigate to its specific topic in this module. The main screen of the application can be divided into four sections, the menu bar, the action bar, set categories, and the information pane. Let's start with the menu bar together with the action bar right below it. These two bars allow you to access all of CPS 2.0 operations. The menu bar contains options divided into distinct sections whereas the action bar allows for quicker access to the most common functions. Below the action bar, on the left of the screen, we have the Set Categories menu. You can use Set Categories for navigating the user-configurable radio parameters within a CPS 2.0 archive file. 
Radio parameters are organized into folders called sets. Right above the Set Categories menu, you can see the navigation path. It is useful when you click through sets and need to quickly navigate to a particular radio parameter. Moving down from the Set Categories menu, you can see the information windows. As you edit parameters within a configuration, the information windows provide validation, warning, search, and help details. The last element of the CPS 2.0 main screen is the information pane. After navigating to a particular set, the programming pane shows the available radio parameters. In this section, we will take a closer look at the menu bar of Moto Turbo CPS 2.0. It's located at the top of the CPS 2.0 window, and it consists of five menus File, Device, Licenses, Tools, and Help. Let's start with File. This menu allows you to perform basic operations, like opening and saving a new file, generating reports from the current CPS 2.0 status, closing the currently opened archive, opening recently used files, and finally exiting the application. Let's move on to the device menu. In this menu, you can read the data of the radio currently connected to CPS 2.0, write data to the device, clone data from one device to another, make sure they are similar models, or if you have a fleet of similar radios, you can quickly clone data to all of them by clicking Clone Express. Below Clone Express, you can upgrade the code plug of a device and write new firmware to that device. In case you need to refresh the radio by writing the firmware files to the device along with the default code plug, you can use the Recover function. The next menu is Licenses. Here you can register, view, recover, and activate device and application licenses. Let's move on to Tools. The Tools menu allows you to quickly access the Customer Programming Software, CPS 2.0 settings, and to import voice announcements. By default, the English voice announcements, provided with the CPS 2.0, are already imported. Now let's go to the last menu, Help. The Help window is used to display context-sensitive help for fields used within configuration and sets. The Help window only appears when a configuration is being edited. In this section, we will take a closer look at the action bar. As you can see, some of its options are grayed out and unavailable at this moment. To make them active, we have to open an archive. Let's do that by clicking Open and selecting a sample archive. Let's choose an archive and click Open. By default, there will be a message confirming a successful opening. Let's click OK. As you can see, the action bar consists of functions available in the menu bar. Its main purpose is to allow you to quickly access the most commonly used functions. The first two functions, Open and Save, come from the File menu. Next to them, we have five functions from the Device menu, Read, Write, Clone, Clone Express, and Update. The last two functions on the action bar are Register and Activate from the Licenses menu. CPS 2.0 has a new code plug file format, .ctb2, as compared to the legacy CPS1, .ctb. While the new file format is incompatible with the old software, the old file format can be opened and edited both with the legacy CPS and CPS 2.0. However, when you open it in CPS 2.0, you can save it only in the new file format. This allows better migration from CPS to CPS 2.0 and eventual migration to radio management, which also supports .ctb2 files. CPS 2.0 has four methods to aid the user's error detection capabilities. These include validation results, warning messages, search results, and help. They are located on the bottom of the screen under the dockable tabs and are customizable to allow the user to move and dock them to any area of the screen according to preference. The Validation Results window displays error conditions within the configuration. The following columns are available from the Validation Results table. Path – a path within the configuration to the field containing the error. Error Code – an internal error code that identifies the error within the system. Description – a description that provides details of the error. Actions – when a refresh icon, reset value, is displayed in the Actions column, the validation error can be automatically resolved by clicking the icon.
and the user is taken to the set associated with the error. The Warning Messages window displays warnings that appear in configurations. For example, if you've provided a value which is out of range for the field, you'll get such a notice. The Search Results window allows the user to search for fields and field values when editing configurations. The Help window is used to display context-sensitive help for fields used within configurations and sets. The four methods which aid the user's error detection capabilities validation, results, warning messages, search results, and help are located on the bottom of the application under dockable tabs. They are customizable to allow the user to move and dock them to any area of the screen according to preference. To dock a tab, first open it. Now turn off the auto hide functionality of the window. Now the window is docked as default. Once the window is docked, you can click on the header and drag the window to the desired location. If you want to dock it into the UI, drag and drop the window to specific icons which appear on the screen. When you hover over the icons, the highlight will show you where the window will be docked. Note that when you move to different sections of the screen, new docking icons appear. CPS 2.0 introduces a grid-centric configuration, which will present the user with a total view and allow them to update multiple fields in a single window. The idea is to allow the user to add, edit, and delete data with the fewest clicks possible. Another important add-on includes the ability to open multiple CodePlug windows simultaneously. In addition, there is a new workflow support to allow the user to copy and paste data across multiple open CPS 2.0 code plugs. Radio management users will now be able to copy and paste data across an RM configuration client and CPS 2.0 open code plug. CPS 2.0 introduces the concept of sets and configurations for programming and organizing radio fields. A set is a logical group of related radio fields. For example, the general setting set contains fields that are not specific to a given radio feature, but generally apply to radios. Additionally, most sets are grouped into folders to make them easily accessible. The CPS 2.0 application is used to access and program radio fields within sets. A configuration is a collection of sets, grouped into folders, that make up a complete device configuration. Different types of configurations are associated with radio models, versions, and options. Once the configuration is transferred to a device, it forms the code plug of the device. A big quality of life improvement has been introduced to contacts management in CPS 2.0. In legacy CPS, the user would first need to select an individual call type and assign a contact. The process would need to be repeated with every single call type. With CPS 2.0, the user selects a contact from the list and associates any required call types to it. This allows for better structure and organization to manage parameter association. In Module 4, we will go through the key workflows with Moto Turbo CPS 2.0. Using the USB cable applicable for your device, plug it into the USB port of your PC with CPS 2.0 software installed. In this section, we will take a look at reading a device's data. First, make sure that your device is connected with the programming cable and turned off. Now, power on your device and wait for your PC to detect it. When you hear a system sound, your device can be read. Now you can use a combination of Control plus R or click the Read button from the action bar. A loading bar appears. It might take some time to read your device. If CPS 2.0 successfully loads your device's data, it will display this message. 
You can scroll up and down to display all the information in this tab. Alternatively, you can use the Set menu to navigate through the data. Let's go to Device Information. Here you have all the information relevant to this particular device. In this section, we will take a closer look at opening, editing, and saving code plugs. Let's open an archive by clicking Open straight from the action bar, or go to File and then click Open. Let's choose a sample archive and click Open. Once the archive loads, close the pop-up message. Now, in the Set Categories menu, we can easily navigate through the radio's data. First, let's go to the Device Information tab to see if we can edit any information there. As you can see, all the fields in this set are uneditable. Let's move on to the General set and edit some information there. This set has many different subtabs. Let's open General Settings. In this tab, we can edit a lot of information. For example, let's change the radio alias for this radio. Now let's change radio ID using the up and down arrows. As you can see, the General Settings tab also has many submenus available at the top of the information pane. Let's go to Battery Saver and see what we can edit there. Here we have many options that influence the battery life. We can extend it by, for example, disabling all tones. Let's do that. OK, let's edit one more tab before saving the changes. Let's go to Text Messages from the Set Categories. Here you can enter messages that can later be assigned to a programmable button to quickly send them. Let's add a sample message by clicking the Plus button. Now, if you don't save the changes and click the X button, the system will display a warning message. In this pop-up window, you can either save the new configuration or discard all the changes. For now, let's close the window by clicking Cancel. Let's try saving the archive using the Save function from the Action Bar. The system prompts us to change the name of the file in order to be able to save it. Let's click OK and go to File menu and select Save As. Now, change the name of the file and hit Save. Our newly configured archive has been saved. In this section, we will take a look at updating a device. First, make sure that your device is connected to your PC with a programming cable and turned on. Now, let's click Update from the action bar. You can also use the Control plus U combination. A window with our connected device model opens. Let's slide to the right to see all available entries. Now, to select available update packages for our radio, we have to open the firmware version selection menu. In this case, we have one update package available. Let's select it. Notice how the Update button has become available. Let's click it to initiate the update. It might take a couple of minutes to update your device. If your update is installed successfully, you will get this message. Let's close this message by clicking OK. In this section, we will take a look at writing data to a device. Remember to write any changed data to your device. Otherwise, the changes will not be saved. First, make sure your device is connected to your PC via the programming cable. Now, with our device connected, Let's open a code plug that we want to write to our device. Click Open from the action bar. 
Let's choose a sample archive and click Open. Click OK to close the message. Now with the code plug open, let's write it to our radio. We can do that from the device menu, straight from the action bar by clicking right, or by using the key combination Control plus W. Let's click right from the action bar. Now we have to wait until the application finishes the operation. If the right operation is successful, you will get this message. Let's click OK. Now your device will restart with the new code plug written into it. Motorola Solutions is exploring ways to enhance the overall user experience and improve cycle time response on customer-found software issues. CPS 2.0 provides an optional method to automatically collect information and send error logs to Motorola Solutions support team. The error logs include scenarios related to workflow errors, feature abnormality, critical software errors, and performance issues. The logs are automatically saved locally on your PC in Program Data, Motorola, Moto Turbo CPS 2.0, Log, and may be automatically sent to a Motorola solution server if the feature is enabled in your CPS 2.0 settings. In this short section, we will take a look at how to enable uploading application logs to a remote server. To configure that setting, let's go to Tools menu. Now click Settings. In the Settings window, we have to go to Log. If you want to allow automatic log uploading, check this box. Always remember to save any changes you want to keep. You have to restart the application for the changes to take effect. The Voice Announcement Set allows the user to map Motorola pre-recorded voice files to operation items, configure the voice announcement parameters, and load the voice file from CPS 2.0 into the radio. The recorded content is played when the user triggers the relevant operation item or a certain operation occurs, such as a channel announcement during the radio power-up. First of all, open a code plug or read a device. Once the configuration is loaded, open General Folder and then Voice Announcement Set. File List contains all the audio files which you can assign to different triggers. To add a file, click the Add button. Now you can see all available audio files that you can add to your file list. If you want to add more audio files, add them to the Voice Announcement folder located in your CPS 2.0 installation folder, and they will appear on the list. Select the audio files you want to use and click OK. If you want to delete a file from your file list, click on it and then on the Delete button. Once you have some files on the file list, you can assign them to specific triggers. Scroll down to Voice Announcement File Selection. Here you can see a list of events. If you click on the editable field next to it, you will be presented with a list of audio files you can assign to it. You can also use the Set Voice Files option, which automatically configures a voice file to each parameter under File Selection that is set to None if the file name of the voice file matches the parameter name. You can also clear all voice file selections by clicking on the Clear Voice Files button. In this section, we will cover language packs. Language packs can be added from within an archive. Let's open one. Click Open from the action bar. Select an archive and click Open. Let's close the pop-up window with a success message. Now with our archive open, let's navigate to General tab in the Set Categories menu. Once the tab extends, go to Language Packs. As you can see, the language pack list for this archive is empty.
Let's add some languages to this list. To do that, click the plus icon. A list of available language packs expands. Let's choose a language and click OK. Now the language is added to this archive. If you want to add this newly configured archive to a radio, connect it with a programming cable. Once connected, write the data to the radio using the write function. In this section, we will take a look at one of the new features of MotoTurbo CPS 2.0, Clone Express. Clone Express allows you to quickly clone a code plug to your connected radio. Make sure that your radio is connected with a programming cable and turned off. Then turn on your radio. Once connected, open a new archive via Open on the action bar. Select the archive that you want to clone to your radio and click Open. Make sure that the archive is for a similar radio model as your target radio. Wait for the archive to open and then click OK to close the pop-up message. Now with our archive opened and radio connected, let's click Clone Express on the action bar. In the menu, we can see our connected radio. Let's click Clone to start the cloning process. The cloning process may take a while. If your cloning is successful, it will display this message. Click OK to close the message. In Module 5, we will have a look at licenses in MotoTurbo CPS 2.0. You can manage two types of licenses in CPS 2.0 application licenses and device licenses. Application licenses allow users to add features to the CPS 2.0 application, such as 20-25 kHz channel bandwidth or analog mode support. Device licenses allow you to apply different features to radios and repeaters, such as text-to-speech or enhanced privacy. To get access to licenses in CPS 2.0, go to the menu bar on the top of the window and click Licenses. You will be presented with all the options regarding licenses. Application licenses allow users to add features to the CPS 2.0 application. In CPS 2.0, you have the option to register, view, and recover them. Let's start with the view option. Let's click on it. Here you can see the whole list of application licenses available for you. They are grouped according to the feature's name, applicable region, and their status. Before you can start using a feature on your CPS 2.0 application, first you need to register its license. You don't need to connect any devices, yet an internet connection is required. First of all, click on Licenses on the menu bar and choose Register Application Licenses. In this window, you will be required to provide the Entitlement ID, EID. Once you do it, click Query. The feature name, applicable region, available count, and original purchased count for each feature within the EID are listed. Select the feature to be registered. Click Register. Registering Application Licenses dialog box appears and provides status of the registration process. After registration completes, the success message is shown. CPS 2.0 is now enabled to use the registered feature. This Recover Application Licenses process allows the user to recover, re-download, all registered application licenses to this PC. On the menu bar, click Licenses, and then Recover Device Licenses. The Recover Application Licenses status dialog box appears and provides status of the recover operation. After the licenses have been recovered, the success message appears. Click OK. Device licenses allow you to apply different features to each radio and repeater. In CPS 2.0, you have the option to register, activate, view, and recover them. 
Let's start with the View Registered Devices option. It allows you to view the devices that have been registered to the features within an eID. Let's click on it. First of all, you need to provide the eID number of the license. Next, click Query. Select a feature available under the eID and click Next. The Registered Devices page lists the serial numbers of the devices registered for the selected feature. Before you can start using a new feature on your device, first you need to register and activate its license. First of all, click on Licenses on the menu bar and choose Register Device Licenses or click on the Register button in the Action bar. In this window, you will be required to provide the Entitlement ID, EID. Once you do it, click Query. The feature name, applicable device region, available count, and original purchased count for each feature within the EID are listed. Under the Select column, enable the checkboxes for the licensed features that you want to register. Click Next. Now you need to enter the serial numbers for the devices that you want to activate the selected features on by using one of the following buttons. The Add button. A row will be added to the grid and you need to provide the serial number of the device. The File to Grid button. You can import the serial numbers from a comma-separated variable .csv file. The Add All Connected Devices button. The serial numbers from all the connected devices will be added to the grid. We are going to use the first option. Click on the Add button. Now provide a serial number of your device. Click the Register button. Registration status page lists all serial numbers targeted for registration, the feature registered, and the registration status. If status is Feature Registered Successfully, the feature is now ready to be activated in the device. Once you have the license registered, now it's time to activate it. When the activation process has completed, the license features are enabled in the device and ready to be configured via CPS 2.0. First of all, you need to connect the radio which has had features registered or recovered to this PC. Open CPS 2.0 application and click on Licenses on the menu bar and choose Activate Device Licenses or click on the Activate button in the action bar. Now, CPS 2.0 reads the device automatically and determines if there are any registered devices features ready to be activated. Select the features to activate in the connected device. Click Activate. CPS 2.0 activates the selected feature in the device, the device resets, and the results of the activation process is displayed in the activation status screen. The device is now ready to be configured via CPS 2.0. The Recover Device Licenses process allows the user to download device licenses that were registered on another PC or download updated device licenses for the Software Update Management feature. On the menu bar, click Licenses, and then Recover Device Licenses. Now you need to enter the serial numbers of the devices you want to recover licenses for by using one of the following buttons. The Add button. A row will be added to the grid and you need to provide the serial number of the device. The File to Grid button. You can import the serial numbers from a comma-separated variable .csv file. The Add All Connected Devices button, the serial numbers for all the connected devices will be added to the grid. We're going to use the first option. Click on the Add button. Now provide a serial number of your device. Click the Recover button. The CPS 2.0 contacts the Motorola licensing server and downloads all the licenses registered to the specified devices. Recover Device Licenses status page lists the serial number and features recovered for the specified devices.